What really stuck out to me was talking to Mrs. Rogers at the Hotel Finial this morning. Professor Spencer asked her to talk about her experience during the Civil Rights Movement, and she said she didn't really notice. It never came up on her day today. Her view on it was, why can't we all love each other? And when we asked her a little bit more about, you know, did you notice any of the movements? Nothing came up. To me, this really kind of captures the essence of privilege and white privilege to be able to live through something as monumental as the civil rights movement and to not really notice it and to not have it affect your life while the people who were fighting for it, you know, this was, they were fighting to change your way of life and to be treated as citizens on the same level as everyone else. What stuck out most to me would have to be the names of the four girls from the 16th Baptist Church bombing. Addie Mae Collins, Denise McNeil, Carol Robinson, and Cynthia Wesley. Their innocence was snatched from them at such a young age for, to me, like no reason. It's just like, in a blink of an eye, they were gone. Just seeing their pictures, seeing their face, seeing their smile, and then seeing their gravestone really impacted us. It's just sad, but reverting at the same time. We got to talk to a couple people who actually lived through the civil rights movement and segregation. And for me, just what stuck out the most was like the disparity between their perspectives. Miss Rogers had a kind of an innocent like recollection of that time. She kept repeating, "I don't, I don't remember feeling any animosity towards the other group." And I don't, I'm not trying to say that she did, but it was a segregated society. She, she talked about going to a segregated school, segregated college and it just kind of being like the norm for her. For me, like it was just kind of, it was jarring, like knowing, you know, what happened and like, you know, being in these places that are important to the civil rights movement and just having somebody just like kind of talk about it very casually and very, you know, innocently. Fourth Street, the place that's known as the Black Wall Street is the only place where blacks were allowed to like come together and be like joyful and enjoy everything that they had. This is where most of the black owned businesses were. This is mostly where their heads came up and their chests were out high and that they were proud of themselves and you know they enjoyed their moment in life for the time being. This is the only place like they really felt free, free to express themselves like away from everyone else. The only place where you didn't see colored water fountains or white water fountains, it was just fountains. So it was just a way to, for you know everyone to come together and be who they really are. I came from a small, very, very, very small town, smaller than Carpersville. Uh, my school population was maybe 300 students, and I went to probably 98% black school. So like, you know, seeing this diversity coming out into this world, being in Carpersville, seeing these civil rights movements, and like being about just brings about like so much that we have to do to the world, like to like bring about change and bring about like diverse. Way in the coming to see my history it was coming to see culture, coming to see diversity, coming to see stuff that's in not in the, the north, water. to see what something has, has affected us all. It may just be my culture, but it affected us all, and it's all everybody's culture. It's an American culture. Water.